Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. Today, I want to talk about the trap of ego and how thinking that you're the only person that works here is a slick way to self-destruct. A few years ago, I was at a company as a new hire, and the thing I wanted to do was change their culture. So when I got there, I just started working on stuff. I got started. And what ended up happening is I started feeling isolated because the work I was doing was rather interesting, but it wasn't really the work that anyone else was doing. What I hadn't learned then, what I know now, is that different is difficult. And because it's so difficult, I needed to communicate what I was doing in order to make sure that they understood the power of it. Instead, what ended up happening is I started turning to myself and thinking about my ego and how I was doing work that no one else did. And I got arrogant. It caused me to shut down and further slow up the work that I was doing. You can't change culture without anyone else. And because of my arrogance and ego, I stopped changing their culture and started defending. As a leader, you can't afford to do that. What should I do when I tell myself no one works here? If you feel like you're doing all the work and no one's listening to you, stop. Take a second, have a breath. What you're experiencing is your ego taking control of what you're doing. You're thinking more about yourself rather than the project or the goal at hand. If you're doing work that has an impact, you're going to need allies and friends. As Tom Peter says, politics is life. And the minute you get arrogant enough to feel that you can't contribute and no one else is doing anything around here is the minute you stop being effective at the politics side of it. How do you define arrogance? I define arrogance as me, me, me. Constantly thinking about yourself. You're thinking about how you're going to or how does it feel when you do or how does it look when you do. All of that is about you. Keep your eyes on the prize. The prize is the project and the teams you're serving. Anything else is noise. What are some early collaboration wins you can find? Well, let's say you've done the breathing and you understand that you're arrogant. What are some wins that you can turn from feeling that no one works here to collaborating with the people you need to collaborate with? You can start talking. Have some one-on-one -on -one meetings, get some coffee with people, and tell people what you're doing and what value it brings to them. The reason why people aren't interested in what you're doing is because they probably don't see the value in it. Share that value and you'll get more people excited about the work you're doing. So how do you look at this through the lens of self-awareness, execution, and direction? You have to be aware that ego is a protection mechanism. You're only invested in your ego because you're doing interesting work. So in a sense, congratulations. The minute these feelings kick in, you're probably doing something interesting. But you have to be aware that that feeling, again, is protecting you and your ego from being vulnerable, from experiencing the risk of reaching out to people. Be aware of that as you move forward with the work that matters. What should you do when you're aware of these feelings? you should do a technique called box breathing. Box breathing is a simple technique used by Navy SEALs in order to bring the cortisol levels and stress down and make you more objective in the moment. When you're starting to feel that level of ugh that comes with, I'm the only person that works around here. You're getting stressed because you're not being listened to. So in order to box breathe, all you have to do is Breathe in for four seconds. Hold it for four seconds. Exhale for four seconds. And then hold it for four more seconds. Do that three to four times and you'll notice your stress go all the way down. We have to realize the root of all of this is that people don't understand what the goal is. They don't understand what you're doing and how it affects their lives. Take a moment to write an email or digest every week and send it out to the team. Say, here's the work I'm doing and this is why it matters. 
People may respond to it at first and may, may not. But as you continually do that and keep people up to date on your process, you'll start to find that people do start caring. And once you get to the questions, they're on board. Remember this, you need to be aware of your ego and the fact that different is difficult. You have to execute with the idea of box breathing and bringing those cortisol levels down. And you have to set direction by sending out a digest or a newsletter, or maybe it's even just a paragraph to the team each week about the work you're doing. Having your stress force you to a place to where you think no one works around here is just a trap that's going to keep you from doing impactful work that matters to you and the team around you. Stay focused. If you look in the description box, you'll find a couple of books that help me dive deep into emotional intelligence. They've had exercises, research, and deep dives that help me bring these concepts to you. This isn't a one-way conversation. And in fact, it's not a two-way either. We're part of a community, the life as usual community. And as leaders, especially creative leaders, emotional intelligence is something that we all need to get better at. We can reach out to each other through the comments section, through sharing this video, through liking it, and help each other talk about, build upon, and explore these concepts in these videos. Remember, I'm not just a teacher, I'm a student as well. Help me learn your perspective.